Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In today's episode, we're going to be finding a home for this larva egg. We're going to be building Slickster Ranches up here, although we're going to use sort of an unorthodox design that also features built-in oil storage. Hmm, yes. You'll also notice, though, it seems that we're running behind in tasks on the colony. In fact, we're still only running 11 total duplicates with nine on this home colony and two on Frostine. So I think we're also going to try to add a couple more duplicates. On top of that, we should be looking forward to our first pieces of plastic, and I'm looking forward to having that plastic online. To start off with, we're going to need it to be able to trap this Slickster and move it to their new Slickster ranch. We could just move the egg, but there's no way our ranch is going to be completed in the less than five cycles that this egg is going to hatch. And when you're building Slickster Ranches, you need to make sure that the temperature is set within their livable range. And a standard Slickster can only live between 35 and 160 degrees. Also concerning the temperature, you'll notice that the carbon dioxide in this room is only around 70 degrees. In some other Slickster Ranches, we've used carbon dioxide that is in the hundreds. And in those ranches, we're able to go directly to molten Slicksters that can live from 75 to 270. But the key being is that when a regular Slickster is living in an environment that's beyond 100 degrees, they'll start laying molten Slickster eggs, in which case they'll consume the carbon dioxide and create petroleum directly. We won't be getting to do that, being that our carbon dioxide is only 70 degrees. Not a big deal. That's just going to give us an excuse for a future petroleum boiler. Additionally, it'd be nice to have all that plastic. We can upgrade some of these ladders. And it'd be nice to start taming these volcanoes and providing some cooling for our oxygen. Which oxygen brings us to another point. If we plan on increasing our duplicate count, we're going to need to make sure that we're creating more polluted dirt to keep feeding into these sublimation stations. We're sitting at 210 tons, so I'm not so concerned right now, but the more ethanol we distill, the more polluted dirt we create. And I'm sort of all in on this colony getting all of its oxygen from polluted dirt. I mean, there's just something artistic about it, isn't there? But in order to get more polluted dirt, we're going to need more lumber. Except this time, we're going to have the pips planted themselves. It won't be as fast as this type of ranch, but it'll still be more lumber. And more lumber equals more ethanol. And that leads us to another unfortunate project, and that has to do with expanding this setup. Except this time, I'm really hoping not to make all this carbon dioxide explode all over our colony. That would be bad. So to make sure that doesn't happen, we're going to put in a proper liquid lock this time. And we're going to make sure that we don't trap Jack died in the process. But that way, we can get in here, we can work all we need to without creating a monstrous mess. As for the Slickster Ranches themselves, they're going to be going right about here. There's not going to be enough room to put ranches in here with the amount of width we have. I know you're looking at it and saying 96 tiles, but in my standard horizontal style Slickster Ranch, I normally have them blocked in like this, and that way all of their oils drops down in one spot. The door and the tile that's required to keep them in that spot widens the stable by another few tiles, and we just don't have that room. This new system, the ranches are going to be vertical like this, and so all their oil will drop down pretty easily. But additionally, it'll also give us a huge area where we're actually storing up that oil as well. And that design is going to look something like this. The Slicksters will live up here, and drop all their beautiful crude oil down here. And the great part about this design is you can keep extending it along with as many ranches as you can squeeze in here. We'll get to those numbers in a second. But the great thing about it is this also just becomes one giant tank full of crude oil. As for the number of ranches, well, that's going to be more of a swag than it is going to be an exact science. But we can get a rough estimate by using the output of the carbon dioxide from all the ethanol distilleries which if we say we have nine of them is about 1.5 kilos per second. And then we add in three petroleum generators and that's another 1.5 kilos per second for a total of three kilos per second. But we shouldn't use that three kilos per second figure because these machines don't run 100% of the time. And that's where the swag sort of comes in. If we click on one of these ethanol distillers and check the properties, we can see that this cycle it ran 100% of the time Last cycle, it ran 100% of the time, but in the last five, it's only averages 33%. And with the petroleum generator presenting these numbers, which as you would expect is the same for both petroleum generators, we're just going to estimate 1.5 kilos per second. Well, if we multiply that by 600 seconds in a cycle, we're given 900 kilos of carbon dioxide 
per cycle. And that's where it kind of gets funny because with just using that swag amount of 50%, we're going to be able to run 45 slicksters because they only consume 20 kilos per cycle. And it would take six of these ranches to hold 45 slicksters. So I don't think we're going to go with that many. So we're going to go with just 32 slicksters to keep this somewhat in the ballpark of sane. But now that we know that we have 32 slicksters to work with, we also know that we're going to have a total of 320 kilos worth of oil per day or a little over a half a kilo per second. That's not too shabby. Now this is going to take them a little while because we also have to put in a bunch of drywall all over this place. So not only is this going to be a material significant project, it's also going to be a time significant project. It's also the reason why you see all these ladders everywhere, because they're going to need to be able to get in here to be able to build the drywall. And what are you doing, John Mann? Of course, this would be the only tile that you plan on completing. Let's deconstruct that before you die. So we'll work on all of our other projects while this is being built in the background. And the first of those projects, I believe, is going to be able to get this Pip Ranch online. We're throwing in a full three ethanol distilleries, even though this ranch's lumber isn't going to be as much production as this ranch. And that's because these trees are being domestically grown versus wild grown. And since there's so many building projects, we're going to be able to use a little ladder trick. We're going to create all these ladders with the priority of one. So the duplicate shouldn't get around to building these for quite some time. Then we're going to drop off seven Arbor Acorn and then let a bunch of pips in here. And we'll be able to force their hand and show them where they actually need to bury these acorns. Just so happens we have a stack of seven right here. So we'll sweep them and voila, we have our seeds. But there's another problem with growing Arbor Trees in here. That's right. It's a little chilly. So we're going to start off by sealing this room in as best we can. Now we could get fancier with this, but really there's no need because eventually all this chill will be gone anyways. It's just going to take longer than we'd feel comfortable waiting. But it just so happens that we have a bunch of carbon dioxide that we're going to be sending up here anyways. And as long as it's above 35 degrees, we don't care. So we're going to take the carbon dioxide straight off of this line, waste an obnoxious amount of steel creating some radiant gas pipes, and then we can have it rejoin the rest of the carbon dioxide like this. Now, carbon dioxide is not a great transfer of thermals, but considering the amount of carbon dioxide that we're going to be shoving through these pipes, it'll eventually get the temperature there. And it is a good thing that we're going to start sending all this carbon dioxide through because it's been sitting in these insulated gas pipes for so long. Even though the gas pipes are insulated, this carbon dioxide is now sitting at 22 degrees. It gets warmer the lower you go because, well, that's where the more fresh carbon dioxide is. So we're actually going to start pumping in that carbon dioxide now. For now, most of this carbon dioxide is going to be lost to the vacuum of space, but at least it'll get it flowing enough so we can get the warm carbon dioxide where it needs to go. I may have lost track of how much water I was putting in this liquid lock. Oh boy. I think we have found ourselves a new dupe. This Bonnie has plus 11 construction. Just so happens we could use a good builder. Now it looks like they have a lot of negatives, Except their negatives are really things we don't care about. Bathroom use, speed, decor, and decreased medicine with unempathetic. And what's even better is they have quick learning. Welcome to the colony, Andy. Update on our ethanol facility expansion. I should have built these out of standard tiles because now that we have the liquid lock in place, we're just going to replace all these with mesh tiles. Well, almost all of them. This one right here is going to become a ladder. And we're going to enjoy the gas change as soon as this is opened. All these other gases are going to get super compressed really quickly because of all this carbon dioxide. Now, I was going to do something obnoxious and just open up the roof and have it push all the oxygen out. And I thought, no, let's do this smarter this time. We'll put in a nice little gas pump. And then we'll just filter out all the oxygen and then send the rest of the carbon dioxide on its way. While we're at it, we're going to steal this auto. Now, I don't love the noodle arms, but once again, they're a quick learner and they start with a plus 10 to husbandry, which we're going to need with all of our slicksters. Welcome to the colony, the FAP engine. And to head off any of the comments, yes, I know. And it's a good thing we got that auto too, because Iowar, as it stands, was the colony's only rancher. And despite them having a husbandry of 12, our poor little hatch here is glum because they haven't been groomed in a little while. So despite the fact that they have a 46% chance to lay 
a sage hatchling egg, they have not done so yet because their reproduction's been limited because they're not happy and they're not happy because they haven't been groomed because Eilart is just overworked. Back to our ethanol distillery, we need to make some changes to these conveyor rails. Firstly, because the lumber rails aren't being filtered across these ethanol distillers, and more importantly, the ethanol that they hold to keep them chilled. But secondly, because right now, there's just a two-way split for where the lumber ends up, but we actually need a three-way split. So we're going to move the rails around a little bit so the lumber passes over all the machinery and then gets dropped off to all three tiers. And unfortunately, this is going to bring our power generation from our petroleum generators offline as we remove these batteries to be able to get down here and do the work. Okay, this is disgusting, but it's going to work. The lumber is going to come in through these rails and pass all the way through. Now, it's going to take a bunch of bridges because we need to leave the rails open because this rail right here is what's doing the three-way split. Once the lumber comes in all the way through here and drops off here, it will take turns going up to the right and down, where eventually the lumber gets dropped off to all three conveyor chutes evenly dispersed. You ever just get kinda sad? I find myself getting more and more sad lately, and that's because our slickster is gone. And to figure out why, all we have to do is follow the crude oil. The slickster was happy here in the nice warm temperatures, and laid a little bit of oil there, a little bit of oil here, kept running across here, and decided that they wanted to lay some oil in here. Unfortunately, it is far too cold for a Slickster to live over here. Slickster, why? Why would you go over to the cold? Why wouldn't you stay where it was nice and warm? So back to Frosty and we go to get another egg. But this time we're going to put some doors into play. And that way we can keep the Slickster in the warm area until we're ready for it in our Slickster ranches. Nutriolano actually now has a few larva eggs, so that wouldn't be a big deal. But I think before we head over there, we're going to wait and see if the printing pod might bless us with either some slicksters or some larva eggs. Our new pip and lumber farm is going pretty well. This pip has already planted this tree, although it's still a little cool down here. But the carbon dioxide has risen the temperature in here by quite a bit. So I think we're okay with starting the process of planting more trees. The rail system is complete and you can see the lumber being dropped off evenly between all three legs perfect the lumber is spreading its chill throughout the entire facility i think we're almost ready to close this place back up we just need to finish off the piping add the auto sweepers and tie into the polluted dirt rail system i gotta say this actually worked out pretty well with this rail system it's definitely compact but it's working like a charm now this position here may not work because i don't think pips can plant inside of a bisolite it may have a hardness that is too high so far, no luck with Slicksters or Slickster eggs, but we've managed to come across this Owen. This Rowan is a handy operating tidying digger whose only weakness is being biohazardous. Welcome to the colony, Carol. Carol doesn't know it yet, but they're going to be our next mechatronics engineer. It's one of the things we've actually been suffering with because our only mechatronics engineer is actually our cook. I know, it's awkward, but you may remember they came with mechatronics engineering, so they've been kind of splitting duties. So this is a no-go on planting it in the abyssalite, so we're going to use a trick. Now, this trick is a little exploity. I understand. I get it. I know. But all it's really doing is saving us a ton of time. We could throw some dirt here and then superheat it to the point where that dirt turns into a tile of sand. Unfortunately, it would take a long time and it would be a pain in the butt because it doesn't happen until 326 degrees. So for the sake of my sanity, we're just going to do this. I could have also just very easily left the tree out from this position. But what fun is that? So for those of you who don't understand how this works, when you surround a door with enough tiles, for some reason, when you deconstruct the door, you're left with a tile of the same material. Yeah, I can't explain that. I can't justify it. It's just an exploit. And our upgrade here is complete. The batteries are going to take a little while to synchronize, but they'll eventually get there. Now all that's left is for us to close this up. As for all of this carbon dioxide, oh, we aren't playing with it. We're just going to build blocks in and destroy it. Actually, I have another plan. Remember how we have this overflow pipe of ethanol here? Well, why don't we put it to use? I started by building a bunch of blocks in here, and that way when we deconstruct this, we're not going to have to worry about the oxygen this time. In fact, we're going to extend that over by another couple. That way I can put some automation here. Here's how this system's going to work. 
all that ethanol overflow is going to come into yet another tank. When this tank is full enough, it'll turn on this petroleum generator to start burning off that excess. Additionally, we're going to have it tied to this battery right here because we only want it to burn off excess when we need the power, otherwise we would just be wasting power. At least this is the theory. We're going to give it a try. We may have to change some things. All right, the modifications are complete. It took a little bit of rerouting with the overflow piping because of all the bridges and everything. It was getting confusing where the liquids were supposed to go. Now it's working perfectly. You can see we've managed to deliver almost five tons of extra ethanol. This liquid reservoir is above 50, which is this high threshold. So it sends the red signal. We flip it with the not gate and then send it into this AND gate. That AND gate is also tied in with this battery. And this battery just says, hey, turn on when it's between 90 and 60 is standard. And by doing this, we'll slowly burn off all the extra ethanol that comes in. And the reason why we did all this is because now our ethanol distilleries should be working flat out, creating us more of that beautiful, beautiful polluted dirt. Now it really is time to close this off because all the heat being generated from this room is slowly seeping out. Even the wheezewort wasn't able to keep up and we managed to stifle a bunch of mealwood. It was a quick fix though, we just rerouted all of our nice cold polluted water coming over from frosting and now the mealwoods are back. And now we'll just slowly brick all of this in. And when we get to the last brick, when we put it in, since there's nowhere for the carbon dioxide to go, it'll just be destroyed. The wonderful feeling of destroying 1.7 tons worth of carbon dioxide with a brick. And there it goes. It's like magic. And now to get rid of all this water, we're just going to add a quick pitcher pump and have it dumped all down here. We also have a great update for our extra pip farm. The temperature in here is perfect. All the trees are now planted and growing great. Pips are being delivered and creating more dirt for us. The temperature in here is perfectly controlled now and that's being assisted by a new system. We have a gas shut off here controlled by this thermo sensor. If the temperature falls below 20 degrees, a signal is sent to this gas shut off which turns it on. I'll turn it on just to show you the pretty cool way this system works. When the green signal is received, it sends all that hot carbon dioxide through here, routes it all the way around, where it joins back up with its original flow. As soon as the red signal is received, this gas shutoff turns off again, this entire pipe empties, and then the flow from here continues. And then finally, all the lumber joins up with the regular lumber shipment from our domestic farms and gets processed into ethanol and polluted dirt. And then finally, our Slickster ranches are complete, even if Slicksters are oddly absent from it. A couple of tricks I did here, because of all this drywall would take forever to heat up, and we wanted to get Slicksters online as soon as possible, we added some radiant pipes in here, so all that carbon dioxide that's being dumped off in here is also spreading its heat. I'm also going to go ahead and put a bridge here and that way it prioritizes sending it all to the standard part of the ranch and not in here, which is our incubation center. Now Slicksters in this incubation center are still going to want to consume the carbon dioxide, hence the reason we put a small enough pole in here to hold some crude oil. Both these incubators are powered and controlled by timer sensors and the two of these will be able to produce 40 Slicksters in 100 cycles which works out plenty because we only need 32 Slicksters in 100 cycles. Oh, that's working much better. Now all that carbon dioxide and the heat it's bringing will come by these ranches first. Only once those have hit high capacity will it start offloading some of the carbon dioxide into this incubation center. So offline, it looks like I'm either heading back to Neutralina or getting lucky with the printing pod. Next episode's gonna be all about the thermo aqua tuner and the steam turbine. And the reason is pretty simple. We are a little toasty in this colony. We continuously are getting scalded messages because it is now over 75 degrees around here and it's just gotten too hot overall. It won't be long before all of these trees would be stifled as well, so we're going to do a lot of cooling. Now right now, I'm not sure if it's going to be a giant radiator cooling pipe or if we're just going to take away the sources of heat and ultra cool this oxygen so it eventually cools down the entire colony. For instance, as soon as we get this stuff inside of an industrial sauna, all of our heat problems pretty much go away. I hope you like the new style Slickster ranches. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about them in the comments below. In this episode, we also got another pip ranch online with some wild arbor trees and then once again modified our ethanol distillery. By the way, for those of you who are curious, we're already up over five tons of plastic. I had fun recording this episode. That's all for now, and I'll talk to you soon.